Aloha. I'm Marsha Joyner, your host for Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for end-of-life care and to assist people talking about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so we shift from not talking about dying to talking about it. It's time to share the way we want to live our lives at the end of our lives. It's time to communicate about the kind of care we want and don't want for ourselves. We believe that the place for this to begin is not in the intensive care unit, but together we can explore the various paths to lives ending. Together we can make these difficult conversations easier. Together we can make sure that our wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. If you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey, explore the options and choices at the end of life. This is a conversation that every one of us needs to have, yet very few people are prepared. Too many people in our society have no idea how to properly help a loved one who is at the end of life. We don't know what to say, how to act, or what their needs are. Today's guest is, of course you know, my friend, <laughs> my dear friend, Bishop Eric Matsumoto, Hong Pong Hong Wanji, Mission Hawaii. Eric, aloha. Thank you, aloha. Uh, first of all, now, you are Buddhist. Yes. Tell us, there are so many types and kinds of Buddhism there is Tibetan Buddhism, the Vietnamese have Buddhism, the Chinese have Buddhism, the Japanese. That's, What's the difference? That's right. Um, you're absolutely right. There are many traditions and uh, denominations of uh, Buddhism, and um, each uh, seems to ha ha does have their perspective or approach to death and dying. And so today I'm very happy to join you because uh, <laughs> I do totally agree with what uh, you just mentioned. And the conversation has to start. And it is so important that we do so, that we all do so. And so, um, so I would preface today by saying that uh, I, um, this is not a specialty as far as my area of study is concerned. So what I share today is very general and mostly comes from what I would say uh, would refer to as the Pure Land tradition of the Hongganji tradition. Which, well, that's, uh, but, um, uh, and that's what we want mm -hmm. is, but I just asked a general question, question so we can, so if someone says, but that's not the Buddhism I thought, or that's not the Buddhism that I understand. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking, let's separate some of these. Mm -hmm. And then, for instance, I have a very dear friend Vietnamese, and I was asking her these same questions, and she said, well, we were originally Buddhist, and then the French came in, and they added Catholicism to Buddhism, and then the yeah. Americans came, and yeah, they and added another one. So um, she was saying that, that they have to still move from under all of that. Right, right. Yeah. I think so that's, that's common <coughs> for maybe many people that... Uh, uh, we do have our religious traditions, our spiritual traditions right. by which we're influenced and we seek guidance. Uh, but at the same time, there are, of course, other, other. Uh, factors that yes. also um, form, I guess, our thoughts and, mm -hmm. and, and influence our thinking. And so I think uh, in your friend's case, that's a very good example of that. And I think all of us are well, like But that. she and says so, that they, they really uh, had to work at keeping Buddhism yes, with Buddhism, all of these other influences. Yes, I believe Buddhism does have... Uh, a perspective uh, which uh, I'm not sure if it's unique but uh, is very uh, different from the prevalent perhaps view in our Western yes. societies and that is uh, concerning death and dying that uh, death and dying is a very natural part of uh, life or existence mm -hmm. and so it's a, a natural part of life and yes. living uh, like two sides perhaps of the same coin and so um, death and dying uh, is not something that should be feared or seen as being um, unnatural uh, and so forth which and but that's not to say that you know we might have some anxiety about it and in Buddhism I think that's one of the goals in which we, we do 
always talk about birth, old age, sickness, and death as being a very natural part of life again and living existence. And so we're encouraged to be aware of that and, and live our lives uh, uh, realizing then, uh, because life is impermanent, uh, also at the same time how precious this moment mm -hmm. we have with each other, with one another, that I have is also. So um, that is kind of in a nutshell, perhaps, the Buddhist perspective then. So now that would be a sort of basic, basic in all key, yes. of Buddhism, Buddhist. Buddhist. in spite of all of the different it's approaches, approaches. To, to, yes. to death and dying. Yes. yes. So do, are there rituals? Are there uh, different uh, when a person is at the end, not not an accident or any of that kind of stuff, but when we know that the tumor is not going to get any better, the person is really, you know, at the end. How do you approach those type of things? Uh, yes, I would say, generally speaking, um, all the Buddhist traditions, uh, I believe, do have some ritual or procedure in which they would like to uh, <coughs> assist or be involved in uh, as the person approaches the, the end of life. Uh, depending on the tradition, the extent of what is uh, done or performed uh, it, it can be very different. Uh, however, um, generally speaking, yes, there, there, is, uh, there are rituals uh, that help to uh, bring about an awareness to calm the individual and also the family okay. and friends and so forth. And, um, for example, uh, and so again, it, it might differ depending on the tradition. Uh, some traditions would uh, emphasize more that uh, more than a ritual at that very point at the end of life. It's more how you view your life in general. Uh, again, appreciating that uh, the preciousness of life and and the fact that life is impermanent, coming to fully grasp and understand to that to the point that it's not knowledge anymore about it, but it's turned into wisdom, which guides you know, one's <clears throat> how one is dealing in that moment uh, uh, with death and dying. Uh, other traditions do have rituals uh, which help, like chanting of the sutras, for example, uh, are, are part of, uh, I think, many of the traditions in which uh, the chanting is to remind us of uh, the teachings, the dharma uh, of the Buddha. Um, the dharma? Which, yes. The Dharma is? The Dharma, uh, in the Buddhist tradition, Dharma refers to the teachings of the, the teachings. Buddha. Ah, okay. Um, and uh, generally, we might say it also refers to ultimate reality or ultimate truth, uh, which for Buddhists it means the teachings of the Buddha. Yes. Uh, and so we go to the Dharma, the teachings for guidance, uh, in hopes that it you know, is able to, again, provide us with understanding, uh, again, um, to the point that it becomes wisdom in which it helps us then to, to, to guide myself and so others. So you begin this process long before the person yes, is that at is, a critical... Uh, as a Buddhist clergy, yes, yes. That, that is our wish, our aspiration, that people do, again, uh, become aware of, uh, again, birth, old age, sickness, and death as a part of life. So this is a part of it. This is an ongoing yes. process. This yes, it is. This isn't something, something that, that happens at the end. As you mentioned earlier, yeah. right. Uh, well, we hope that people are not waiting till waiting, the end yes. uh, to, to begin the conversation. We hope that it's uh, begun a long time ago. But I think uh, the reality is that for many people, it's a difficult subject to breach. And uh, so, do you ever uh, have a family? Let's say yes. the person is, we know this person is not going, you know, this, whatever they have is not yes. going to get any better. Do you have a family? Do you, with them, do you ever come together as a family with you or some other clergy to to For really to talk about? Talk about yeah. Yes, we're, we're encouraging that at this time. Uh, uh, we have, for example, in the Hompa Honganji Mission of Hawaii, in the Honganji tradition, we have a compassionate care committee, which uh, is, uh, seeks to promote again uh, uh, and encourage people to to have the conversation and to begin. Uh, talking about what is what are your wishes and have others also know about it. Um, however, uh, I would have to say that I think for the Buddhist tradition, a lot of our involvement at, in a person's uh, dying moments come after a person has passed away, traditionally up until now. But uh, there is an ongoing 
shift right now that we're trying to, especially here uh, in America, sort of make uh, uh, emphasize how um, no, we have to be involved earlier. In the, yeah, and and that's precisely again. Yeah, oh, yeah very, very we want to talk about it. Yes, we want to make it easier for and people to talk about it, so that we understand your yes, wishes. Yeah. Right. True. Uh, we hear so many horror stories of uh, somebody says, this is what I want, but then some other relative says, no, don't do this, no, don't yes, do that. It, it, and is, it is uh, more common than I think people do <laughs> yeah. uh, realize. So yes. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Do you have the family together? In, with your compassion? We do, yes, we are, we are encouraging that at this moment. And uh, we have that com the Compassionate Care Committee that I just mentioned. Uh, yeah, it has, uh, in the past couple of years, uh, had several seminars and hosted uh, gatherings in which we, we bring that up, awareness about and encourage people to do that with their family. And, uh, um, and so we're hopeful that uh, there will be more of, uh, you know, seminars like those that we have hosted in the past again and uh, I know there is something coming up er later this month uh, What's the date? Uh, by um, Hos uh, by Hospice Hawaii and Pacific Health Ministries uh, they're, they're having a uh, conference in which they're asking clergy and uh, those in the medical profession to come together to be able to talk and discuss and share you know what to them is important for each other to know yes. uh, at the end of life and so that and what so to say and for, what not to right, say right yes. exactly yes uh and so i'm kind of looking forward to that do you uh, know when that is it's on january 12th it's happening that's next over, week yes over at uh, one of the facilities at queens uh they, they're hosting this conference and that's i see it as an important step towards you know again working together as you mentioned earlier as well and uh, the medical profession and the religious spiritual community yeah, there's caring the, for the whole individual the whole think, individual and yes yeah. yeah and the family is very much a part of the oh, whole yes. yeah. not only yes the individual who's dying or, but uh, yes caring for family and friends we, i um, saw uh, is also very important on being mortal i think it was a pbs piece and the doctor says he was trained to do to save life and that there's at a point you know that this treatment is not going to work, but that part of you says, I'm supposed to keep going. And so he had this real dilemma of what do I say? When do I say it? When do I tell a patient when I've been t trained to do something else? <laughs> so I think this is a good thing that they're talking about it. Right, I think so too, yes. Yeah. I, I think, yes, I think in the Western world, the medical profession has been uh, trained, and of course, to, to prolong life, to save life at a, uh, a life at all costs, and, and and that has been the tradition, I think. Um, but there is another wisdom, I think, that is uh, available to us, which while we do realize uh, how precious life is, uh, at the same time to realize uh, the truth of impermanence, that things do change, and uh, we are mortal, and there is a point. There's a point, which, yes. yes and, and I think that that's a good thing that they're doing this seminar because of learning for the people to be able to say, because the patient knows, so to be able to say clearly and that this is a point with which we need to be clear with the patient and with compassion. You know, you don't say, well, this is it. I can't do anything else. There's got to be a way to say this, to yeah. be loving, because the end is as sacred as the beginning. It's the beginning. Uh, exactly, yes. That, that's so, so they true. need to be able to do that. So let's talk again some more. We've got to go to break. Oh, no. We will be back in one minute. Hi, I'm Kili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute. I'd love you to join us every week, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. for Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We report every week on the good things going on in our state as well as the better things that can go on in the future. We have guests covering everything from the economy, the government, and society. See you Mondays on Ehana Kako at 2 o'clock p.m. Until then, I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, 
but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha. Thank you for staying with us. We are today talking with my dear friend, Bishop Eric Matsumoto. And I tell you, he is just the nicest man. Uh, at first, I was not, I didn't know anything about Buddhism, but I have spent so much time with the bishop and learning so much about Buddhism. And if you've not been to the temple, the temple is on Nu'uanu Avenue, Oh, no, Pali Highway. Pali Highway. Our, our main temple, that main is. Temple our largest temple on, is on, on Pali 1727 Highway. Pali Highway. 1727 Pali Highway. And you're always welcome. Yes. And it is just a wonderful experience learning about the other traditions. In fact, that's the real beauty of living in Hawaii, is that you get to meet people like Bishop Eric Matsumoto and other traditions and everybody shares each other's culture. And next week is the Martin Luther King All Day, and the bishop will be in the parade yes, every I'm year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a wonderful way to live, to be, uh, to to know people of different faiths and different traditions and different cultures. And that's why we are having this conversation to talk about the different cultures and the different ways that people handle the end of life. So now, stop me if I'm wrong. I understand that Buddhists don't even kill roaches. So <laughs> we try not to. Try not to. <laughs> we try to be compassionate. Try to be compassionate. Yes. So when you don't do reach the end of life and someone says, well, you know, I really don't want to do this any longer. How do you feel about that? Um, the Buddhist perspective, I believe, would be, the best would be a, a natural death, uh, 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 and to let the things take its course, so to speak. Uh, um, although that's not to say that one should not uh, take advantage of palliative care, for example, and so forth. I think that's a wonderful contribution it of is. medical science today that, you know, we have so much to offer someone who may be experiencing pain and discomfort and to, to be able to relieve that, uh, I think is something wonderful that everyone should seriously look at. Um, uh, but it, again, I guess uh, in Buddhism, you know, uh, the most, the best is a natural, oh, natural. kind of. But you know, like you said, okay, now them. we're talking about people that are seriously, and yeah. we know that they're not going to get well. Um, yes, there's hospice and palliative, palliative care with compassion. I think is what they call themselves, mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's really about making people comfortable. Uh, what I understand about palliative care is that they and they do include the family uh, in learning about what is going on and how to uh, handle it. Uh, hospice, of course, is, is absolutely wonderful, my experience with them. But when a family, you know, we have palliative care and we have hospice, but now enters another family person and says, oh, no, 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 no. How do we deal with that with Buddhism? Mm. In Buddhism, I believe you would ask all family and friends to uh, focus on the individual who, who is dying. I, uh, uh, we may all have our own thoughts and what we think is important. Uh, however, I'm not the one who's dying. Uh, right. It's mom or dad or grandpa, grandma, uncle, auntie. Who, uh, uh, and so uh, we need to be focused on that, on the individual and their wishes, uh, and uh, that that would be what I believe in general in the, the Buddhist tradition uh, would say, and so um, we would encourage. Uh, of course, uh, we 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 want everybody to feel comfortable and feel like they are they're not being sort of shoved to the side, and so uh, as as you mentioned earlier, I think it's important that that family does. Uh, 
uh, talk to each other and come to some understanding. Uh, I fully realize at times it can be challenging again because of different perspectives uh, and so forth. But that's maybe where it is important maybe to have uh, someone who uh, of a spiritual nature to be a facilitator or, or even in this case perhaps somebody from like hospice uh, or so forth who can uh, act as a facilitator to have the conversation take place so uh, that there is uh, more uh, understanding and compassion so, focus yes. again on, on the person. So we, we sh now my view is we should have this conversation with our family now while True. I'm yes. healthy instead of getting the emotions at the end because yes. emotions Absolutely. change at the end oh don't leave me don't go yes yes, yes. yes. so uh that's my whole thing and with your now you have to tell me again about the hospice seminar is it a seminar you said uh, yes it's a seminar and it's yeah. for uh i believe it's making health care whole it making health care whole. whole yeah it is. That's a great title. And it's when and where? Uh, on January 12th, uh, again, I forget the exact facility, but, but it's, you said uh, it's on Queens. the grounds of, yeah, somewhere on the grounds of near Queen's Hospital, yes. Probably in the auditorium. Yeah. yeah. For those of you that know where the auditorium is, yeah, it used to be the Mabel Smythe Auditorium. Oh, okay, I think so. I think yeah. that, that sort That's of rings usually yes. where they have, where they <laughs> the have these. Type yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, lovely yeah, facility, yeah. 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 And that's the 12th? Uh, the 12th. Uh, in the morning? Uh, it's a whole day, all day. Uh, event, yes. Uh, is it uh, open to the public? I believe it is, yes. But mainly for doctors and clergy? Uh, primarily, but I think it is open to, to other individuals. Uh, registration forms ha have been uh, available uh, for those who want to participate as individuals. So we could just call hospice away? Or yes, hospice? I believe that would be the best place. Uh, if you go, I believe you go on to their website. I think is it hospice Hawaii? Because there's several hospices. Uh, yeah, I believe it's hospice Hawaii. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think we all should go. <laughs> we should yeah, all take advantage yeah, of it. Yes. Now, quickly, the Dalai Lama is Buddhist, yes. and that's Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, yes, uh, one, one of the Tibetan traditions. Okay. Yes. Now, is that different from yours? A little different. Uh, we're, we are both Buddhists. Uh, however, yes, there's a difference perhaps in emphasis uh, and so forth uh, uh, on how to approach uh, death and dying. Uh, generally speaking, from uh, my limited knowledge of the Tibetan tradition, uh, they, they do have a very strong um, emphasis, I think, on uh, a person's state of mind or frame of mind as a person is dying or approaches death. And so uh, in that, in the Tibetan tradition, it's a very important part uh, where uh, uh, there is uh, guidance provided and uh, there are meditations and so forth, which, uh, well, hopefully before, uh, before yes. this time, uh, the person has already been sort of practicing, uh, which you know helps the individual have that so-called um, right frame or state of mind, which is peace and uh, calm uh, and so forth, and not afraid of death and dying. Mm -hmm. um, and e even after death, uh, you know, uh, well, one thing that maybe I should also mention that maybe the Buddhist tradition might be uh, unique uh, is that. Uh, uh, the process of death and dying doesn't stop at the moment of death, but uh, there is, after the physical death, there is still this process of death and dying which is going on, so to speak, for many traditions, and so up to a 49-day period. Oh, really? Uh, and so um, mourning and so forth, you know, does continue, uh, and the chanting of the sutras and so forth, or caring for the person who has passed away does continue uh, in many Buddhist traditions. Um, the Jodo Shinshi or Shin Buddhist tradition to which I belong to uh, places less emphasis on um, how a person dies uh, and instead emphasizes how when we have already previously, hopefully previously, uh, entrusted ourselves to the wisdom and compassion of the Buddha Amitabha, uh, Amitayus, uh, Amida Buddha in Japanese, uh, uh, has already vowed or promised our liberation or enlightenment. And so uh, the exact moment of death and how we die uh, is not as great a concern in that we're already embraced 
by great compassion. And so uh, the emphasis here becomes now on, on, on being to say goodbye, being able to say thank you to all our family and friends who have been a big part of our life uh, and really feel a lot of appreciation and gratitude at the end of life. And so our emphasis is uh, to have uh, uh, what we call today an appreciation service oh. in, in which the person who's about to pass on and if they wish family and friends, and preferably with family and friends, all gather and um, there is a, a short service or a ritual that is performed and you know, where we do acknowledge each other, express our an gratitude. An appreciation service. Yeah, we call it an, an appreciation I service. I love that. Yeah, cool. and that's what we sort of yeah, wish or hope that more people will avail themselves of, you know, to have or, or to do that, not wait until a person has passed away, right? but to gather before. Before, and, that's great. And, and, you know, again, uh, again, so that, you know, death is something that's not feared or, you know, contains a lot of anxiety and, and, and instead, you know, we have this gratitude and Compassion. I think we all should have an appreciation <laughs> before. 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 Yes. yes. You go to funerals and they say all these wonderful things about you. You should be able to say that before. Before, right. Before. Uh, the yeah. person should know that they've been that, appreciated. Yes, they've been appreciated. Yes. yes. Now, we, does that, do you have reincarnation? Is that part of, or? Um. The Tibetan tradition, I believe, does place a heavy emphasis on reincarnation. So you move um, the, bot, the the spirit into... Uh, a, yes. Uh, 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 life, so to speak, maybe continues, so Can, to speak. Yes. Um, although I would say in the Buddhist tradition, um, because the Buddhist tradition uh, re, sort of uh, the t Buddhist teaching is that everything changes, is in a constant state of being. Uh, it's a little different from uh, the idea, that maybe the Christian, if I can use that to make it more understandable, idea of an eternal, unchanging soul. Right. Uh, so it's a little different, different. yes, concept or principle. Uh, and so um, it's not quite that, uh, but uh, in the tr Tibetan tradition, for example, yes, they, they quite often do mention reincarnation uh, and so forth, and, and many of the other Buddhist traditions also do, do speak of, uh, you know, um, the next life, so to yes. speak. Uh, and so uh, there is a, an ongoing process here where life does continue, okay. but it might, you know, it's not necessarily doesn't, doesn't that look like uh, for yeah. right, that, yeah. like you see me now, <laughs> for example. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so, but in my tradition, uh, there is less an emphasis on reincarnation, uh, but more on the emphasis on again uh, being guided and embraced by great wisdom and compassion, and being transformed into that, so that more individuals can, you know, begin to well, appreciate and live. So when I come back, I'm going to come back as your friend. <laughs> Thank you so. Much.